Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You join me today back in the machinery shed and I've got the John Deere behind me, the 155R. A few weeks ago, the mirror on the right hand side of the John Deere was smashed and I, uh, I've been meaning to get around to fixing the mirror. So a company, AgriLine, very kindly sent me a new mirror. I got in touch with the guys at AgriLine and helped me out with a new mirror for the mirrors over there. So I'm just gonna take this mirror out of the box, install it into, onto, the, onto the John Deere. I'll just show you the damaged mirror actually. I mean, so this is the mirror which has been smashed. It's quite difficult to see actually, but it's, it has just gradually been smashed there, just on the corner unfortunately. It's just one of those things, it's just what's happened. So, we've just gotta get this sorted. Unfortunately this week it's been really wet on the farm, it's been really cold, it's been windy all week. We've had Storm Dennis over the last few weeks and also Storm George. So I, I haven't been able to get on with finishing my cultivating work, which I was doing last weekend. Um, instead I was just carting out the rest of the muck on Sunday and then Monday um, and then the rest of this week it's been absolutely chucking it down as I'm sure it probably has for a lot of you guys who are watching from the UK it's just been rain non-stop and um, we're quite lucky on the farm as a lot of you guys know that we don't really get too badly flooded here because it's super light and sandy land and that means of course the rain the water does just drain through but it's it, there are still quite a lot of puddles on the farm and, and there are some flooded areas now so I'm just going to sort this mirror out I've just got in front of me here actually the Canam uh, which is actually going back this week to Canam and it's going to be replaced with another one another Canam Traxter which I'm really looking forward to and I'm quite looking forward to sharing you with you, to sharing with you guys the new um, Canam Traxter which is the HD10 so I'm just going to open this now the mirror and I actually got this pen knife this week from uh, a company called Eyewitness in Sheffield I'll leave a link in the description if you want to get one of these knives they're beautifully made in Sheffield and they're actually one of the last pocket knife companies who make their pen knives in Sheffield by hand. Okay, so here we go guys. That is the replacement mirror. Hey, there we go guys. Wee. So, I've got to somehow put this onto the tractor behind us. Hopefully it'll just clip in. Off with this old mirror, it should just pull out. Oh. Well, not old mirror, but broken mirror. And there's a couple of pins, I think in the bottom here, I just have to undo these. Dee -dee 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 -dee. And there we go, I just popped the new one back in. Sorry guys, I couldn't hold the camera, but just popped it in there, and it's just sitting in there lovely now, so that's so there we go, that's all done. I can control it from the cab on the electric windows and I can set it all up now to the angle which I need. So that's a really good little job done. So a huge thanks to AgriLine for sending me those mirrors there. It's, it's brilliant having a, a new mirror on there again, not cracked. Uh, it becomes a bit of an eyesore when, you, uh, when you're feeding the cows in the winter. And if you guys need to get a mirror for your, for your John Deere 6R or any other model of tractor, I'll leave the link to AgriLine in the description down below. Okay, so because we had a lot of rain this week, unfortunately down the right hand side here, we had quite a lot of water actually coming in from the rain which we've had. So this week I'm gonna be sorting out the rest of these gutters just on this side here to stop all of the water coming in where the 135's home is. And then uh, also, just to keep the shed dry so I can put a bit of straw in there and a bit of hay on that side all, as well. So we'll just head around the farm now and I'm just gonna show you guys the amount of rain we've had and also the cultivating which I did last week and why I can't get on to finish the rest of the cultivating. So hopefully you guys can just see this evening we've got the arena, I put the roller in there now. So I just leave the roller in here now, I come out with the 135 and just maintain the arena for the people who Enjoy riding around here with the horses. Clave, Clave, Cleaver. <laughs> so this week's weather forecast is a little, looking a little bit drier. Just on the right hand side, this is the muck I'm gonna spread this week, hopefully, if the weather does permit it. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get a muck spreader in, put it on the 155 bar and get it spread onto this maize field later on in the week. So hopefully you guys can see just behind me the amount of rain we've had this week and it's just unfortunately meant that we can't get on the land to finish these headlands on this field and then also as well to just finish the field next door, top field. Um, it's just a real devil really because I was getting on so well last week managing to get on and get everything ready for drilling but uh, yeah unfortunately it's just one of those things I'm not, and I'm hoping in the next few weeks that hopefully things will at least 
dry up a little bit so that we can st start ploughing, spreading the muck, and then also start drilling the spring barley and also as well start drilling the sugar beet on the farm because that's got to be drilled uh, later on this month because the sugar beet really needs to be drilled in March so that we can get it into the ground and get it growing really. The, uh, the other, oh, we've got quite a lot of deers just over there. The other issue we've just had as well is the temperature's gone down quite a lot on the farm so when the seed is in the soil it can potentially delay the germination period and also as well it's going to uh, take a little bit more time for the crop to become established um, but but getting it into the ground is the most important thing and as long as it's in the ground then it's all ready and set for when spring does finally arrive and we get the sun and we get a bit of rain which we've got too much of now um, but when it all balances out and everything starts coming together uh, it will be lovely and that's what I'm uh, uh, waiting for now is everything to just turn around and it is bitter today actually on the farm it's about three celsius at the moment it is freezing uh, unfortunately but it's a little bit disappointing that's just the way it goes with farming every year is different and this year to me it seems as though spring is coming in like a lion and i think as we progress into spring hopefully things will turn and it will be a little bit warmer um, rather than just having a completely freezing spring freezing cold and wet spring got a lovely sunset tonight with the Can-Am just in front here. Need to get a bit of fuel in the old girl. Okay, so I've just put everything away and I've fed Clover a dinner for tonight. So I'm just back inside and I'm just doing a bit of research actually on Merlot telehandlers here. So I'm getting a Merlot telehandler to use on the farm in the next few weeks so as you guys know I've got the muck spreading to do I've been in, in touch with a company called AH Muck Spreaders who also do hiring AH Hire and I'm going to hire a muck spreader off them and then I've got the John Deere as well and then also as well I'm getting a loan machine from a telehandler manufacturer to spread the muck but the Merlot probably won't be here in time to do the muck spreading but I've got some other jobs to do with it anyway and then I'm going to spread the muck uh, it's also as well got to be pH'd the field for, with lime for, for the correct pH for sugar beet and also as well it's got to have some P and K on there as well. Some of you guys might have seen on my Instagram the cattle float has unfortunately fallen over from Storm Dennis so I've, so I've got to find a way basically to lift up the cattle float. It's fallen over at an angle like, like that um, so it's going to be quite difficult to pick it up using just the loader tractor so I'm probably going to have to get a telehandler when I get a telehandler in to try and lift one end up or get the neighbour's telehandler and try and lift each end um, to then bring it onto the on, back onto the jacks on the level surface and something else as well I, I did this week is I broke the brackets on the bucket um, the grain bucket with the John Deere this week and we, we sent it away to have some new brackets put on again and when it came back I sent the muck fork uh, on the trailer to Bob Wright who does the um, who does steel fabrication and I'm having the muck fork reinforced with steel bars because I was I was lifting a log with it last year and um, I actually bent one of the the, uh, the claws. So they're being straightened out and they're having some reinforced bars put in there. Um, and also as well on the back, some of the bars have just bent and they've sort of cracked, so they're gonna be re-welded or replaced with stronger bars. Um, unfortunately, in today's society, a lot of um, products uh, don't seem to be built to last. Um, but uh, I think sometimes if you just take a bit of time to send things away to get them reinforced, or if you uh, for example, on the old JCB we used to have, I used to take parts of it off and I'd used to send them, send them away and get them shot blast and repainted in black, but powder coated. And you'll notice that if you do things like that, especially with today's products, that they will last a lot longer. It can make a big difference in the long run. If you've got something which would only last, say, five or seven years, if there was a few small things you could do and you, you did those things, um, it could then potentially last, you know, 10 or 15 years. So just just something to think about and it's just it's something I generally try and do with with some of the things on the farm um, is to try and make them last a bit longer so when it comes back I'll show you guys um, what Bob's done and, and what I sort of mean about reinforcing it hopefully you guys have enjoyed today's video please do remember if you haven't subscribed do click the subscribe button you can also as well tap the little bell I'm now going to go and get my dinner I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll catch you guys later on in the week when I'm cold when I'll be cultivating and also as well I'll be spreading the rest of the month.